Hi students. So in the last four lectures we understood how an electrical or a mechanical system can be modeled in state space. So we have looked into electrical and uh, mechanical systems. In the similar way we can model electromechanical systems also. Okay, so only thing what you need to do is you just write the differential equations describing the system, identify the state variables and then get the equations describing the how these state variables will be varying with respect to time that is dx1 by dt, dx2 by dt, dx3 by dt and so on. Then you put that those equations in a matrix form and then you get the state equation okay so you can try for uh, voltage controlled dc servo motor or dc motor okay and field controlled dc motor any 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 electromechanical system you can try so anyhow if i have a system Okay, so I have a system. Obviously, you know, I will take it as an LTI system. Okay, linear time invariant system. And if I give an input U of T, I am going to get an output Y of T. Okay, so how do I model it? I try the differential equation. So once I write this differential equation, of course this differential equation is in time domain. Okay. So once I write this differential equation, I can get the mathematical model of the system in different ways. One of the way we know is the transfer function model. So what we do there, take Laplace transform, and then you separate y of s and u of s, then you find out Laplace transform of the output divided by the Laplace transform of the input. So we call that as the transfer function. Okay. So this is the transfer function model. The same way I can remind the time domain itself instead of going into the Laplace domain and I can break down this differential equation or maybe it is a higher order equation into a set of first order equation first order differential equation okay and then i can write this in a matrix form that is x dot is equal to ax plus bu and of course in this process of breaking down i define a set of variables in the system i call them as state variables and i'm going to get an expression an equation in this form x dot is equal to ax plus bu where x is a set of or a vector of state variables and u is a vector of uh, inputs and y is an output vector cx plus du okay so i'm going to get this uh, so this model i'm going to call i'm calling it as the state space model because mm -hmm. it uses the state variables okay the only difference between there are of course many difference. One of the difference is 
This transfer function model can relate one output and one input. But at the same time, here in the state space model, you can have a set of state variables and you can have a set of input variables and you can have a set of output variables. Okay, So that is the primary difference between this transfer function model and the state space model. Anyhow, whether it is a transfer function model or a state space, state space model, it is going to represent this particular system which I am taking. Okay, So therefore, logically, since these two represent the same system, I should be able to get this transfer function model if I am provided with the state space model or if I am given this transfer function model, I should be able to get this state space model. That is a logical statement. Okay, That is true also. And I can get this state space model from this transfer function or the transfer function from the state space model. Both are possible. So in the forthcoming lectures, maybe four or five lectures, we will see how a state space model can be transformed to the transfer function model and a transfer function model can be transformed to the state space model. So I will uh, I will have two lectures on state space model to transfer function and maybe three lectures on transfer function to state space model and of course we will take up a few examples also to you know understand the theory or the concept behind this transformations. First let us take the case of transforming a state space model into a transfer function model. State space model of any linear time invariant dynamic system we can represent in this form okay using the state equation and the output equation the state space model is in time domain to stress that point i have used all the variables a function of t that is x dot of t is equal to a x of t plus b u of t and y of t is equal to cx of t plus du of t where x of t is a state vector and u of t is the input vector and y of t is the output vector okay so of course this is in time domain so if you want to get the transfer function model the time domain model has to be transformed into laplace domain so how do you do that you take a laplace transform so we will apply the laplace transform on these two equations this is x dot first derivative so therefore you will have s into x of s minus the initial value initial condition of x equal to a x of s x of t is transformed to x of s and b u of t is transformed to u of s. So let us call this equation as equation number 3. And similarly, transforming equation 2 will yield equation 4. y of s is equal to c into x of s plus d into u of s. Okay. So we have already defined the transfer function. How have we defined the transfer function is the ratio of Laplace transform of output to the Laplace transform of the input, the important condition is when the initial conditions were zero. Okay. So since we have defined the Laplace, sorry, the transfer function with this definition, we have to make the initial conditions as zero. So therefore, we have to make x of zero as zero okay so if you set x of 0 as 0 then the remaining equation is x x of s equal to a x of s plus b u of s so these two are the equations we have now excluding this initial conditions 
So what I want is the transfer function which is nothing but Laplace transform of the output to the Laplace transform of the input when the initial conditions are zero. Anyhow, we have made the initial conditions at zero. So if you make the initial conditions at zero, we get this equation. So now, so equation number four and this particular equation are there. Okay, so from this, what we need to get is y of s by u of s, the Laplace transform of the output by Laplace transform of the input, that is y of s by u of s. So if you look at this equation number four, we have got y of s and u of s. Only problem here is we have another x of s also. So if you really want to relate y of s and u of s, this x of s has to be eliminated or x of s has to be written in terms of y of s and u of s. Okay, anything. So that is possible from this, isn't it? From this equation. If I algebraically solve this equation, I can write x of s in terms of the matrices A, B and U of S. Okay, so what I do is I just take A, or A into X of S to the left side. So this is what? So now X of S is common. So I can take it out, this X of S. So if I take X of S outside, this is what I get. Yes. I minus A into X of S is equal to B U of S. So when I introduce this I, I is nothing but an identity matrix. Some of you may, you know, get confused how I got this I. So to illustrate this, I'm taking a second order system or a, a two state variable system. Okay, a second order system is nothing but a uh, system with two state variables. Okay, specifically, I'm going to take an SISO system that is a single input, single output system for a better understanding. So, for such a system that is a two state variable system, the state equation I can write like this. Okay, I'm right. Yeah. So this uh, this is the state matrix. In general, I'm just representing those elements as a11 a12 a21 a22 and similarly b11 b21 of the elements of the output matrix okay so if i take the laplace transform on this what will happen let us see so the x dot one of x1 dot of t will become x s into x1 of s and this is a constant matrix constants will not have any change and this x1 of s will become x of s and so on okay so whether i can write this equation in this way see right side i don't do any kind of modification so this part i am writing as a product of two vectors isn't it correct s into x s into x1 of s plus zero into x2 of s is nothing but s x1 of s and similarly 0 into x1 of s plus s into x2 of s is going to be s x2 of s so obviously this can be written in this form now if you look at this this is a diagonal matrix with all the elements in the diagonal as s so i can take is out of it and now I get an identity matrix and at the same time I'm going to bring this term to the left side okay so this is what I get uh, now if I take this state vector x1 of s x2 of s and here also x1 of s x2 of s vector so I can take it out if i take it out this is what i get so not out okay so if you look at this this is s and this is an identity matrix and this is a matrix and this is a state vector and this is the output matrix and this is my input vector so 
is there anything wrong if I write as yes identity matrix minus state matrix A into X of S equal to V of U. Okay, so this is how I got this equation. So therefore, there is nothing wrong if I write this equation in this form. Okay, so now what I want is x of s. From the last equation, I want x of s. So since this is a matrix equation, to get x of s, what I need to do is I need to pre-multiply this entire equation, pre-multiply the entire equation by s i minus a inverse. If I pre-multiply the last equation, this is what I get. And since this is a in multiplication of inverse and the same matrix, this is going to be an identity matrix or the entire result is going to be x of s. Okay. And because I have pre-multiplied the right side of the equation, I will get this here. Now, I can substitute, I can substitute this x of s here. So if I substitute this x of s here in this equation number four, this is what I get. If you look at this, I've got only y of s and u of s. u of s can be taken outside. Now I can write the entire equation. I can combine these two equations in this form that is y of s is equal to uh, this particular uh, matrix into u of s. So if you look at this, isn't it of the form O e of s is equal to something into u of s. Otherwise, u of s, that is the output, is nothing but the input Laplace transform of the output is nothing but the product of, otherwise the Laplace transform of the input multiplied by a gain. Okay. So this term is usually we call it as the transfer function. Therefore, this term in this equation is something equivalent to the transfer function, right? Yes. So this is the term which represents the transfer function. Therefore, therefore, g of s is equal to c into this s i minus a inverse into b plus d. Okay. So Obviously, g of s is a function in S and it relates the Laplace transform of the input to the Laplace transform of the output. It can be a single input or it can be a multiple input, especially when we represent a system in state space. The advantage is we can take multiple inputs and multiple outputs at a time. So therefore, here also this u of s and y of s can be the Laplace transform of multiple inputs and multiple outputs. Okay. So anyhow, this particular function of s relates the input variables or the Laplace transform of the input variables with the Laplace transform of the output variables. So we can definitely call this as the transfer function or sometimes in the case of multiple input multiples uh, output system mimo system this will be a matrix and therefore we'll call it as a transfer matrix anyhow we will see those details immediately after uh, yeah we will we will see those details okay so the transfer function of any system or a transfer matrix of any system in terms of the matrices in the state space model can be given by this. Okay.
uh, yeah now we need to see certain you know special things or something that is special about this particular equation or the transfer function equation or transfer matrix equation so i'm going to explain about two observations one observation one and observation two i call okay so the first observation i'll explain now see look at this c is a matrix a is also a matrix i is an identity matrix of the size which is equal to the size of this matrix a and therefore this is also going to be a matrix this inverse the entire thing is a matrix b is also a matrix d is also a matrix c size of c is m cross n where m is the number of outputs and n is the number of state variables and the size of this inverse matrix is n cross n where n is the number of state variables size of b is n cross r where n is the number of state variables and r is number of the inputs so the product of this three matrices is going to be a matrix and it is going to be a matrix of the size m cross r so this is how we get this is the size of matrix c this is the size of the inverse matrix this is the size of the matrix b so we will get a resultant matrix of the size m cross r okay and the size of d matrix is also m cross r so therefore here i get an m cross r matrix and this is also an m cross m cross r matrix so therefore the sum is also going to be an m cross r matrix okay if i take an saso system that is single input and single output system number of input is equal to 1 that is r is equal to 1 and number of output is also 1 because it is a single input single output system so what is going to be the size of g of s g of s is not a matrix it is going to be a scalar or it is a matrix of the size 1 cross 1 because r is 1 and m is 1 the size is m cross r therefore it is going to be 1 cross 1 okay that means we will get a transfer function relating the laplace transform of the input and the laplace transform of the output because it's a single input and single output i can write it as g of s here this matrix you know uh, this entire combination of matrices will result into a single transfer function which will relate y of s and u of s all right this is for a single input single output system now what if you know there are multiple inputs and multiple outputs if i take a multiple input and multiple output system obviously the size of g of s is m cross r since both m and r are greater than one g of s is also is going to be greater than one sorry size of order of uh, you know it is order of uh, g of s is greater than one otherwise g of s is going to be a matrix for example if you take a two input two output system okay g of s is going to be a two cross two matrix so therefore when g of s becomes a matrix we cannot call it as simply as a transfer function we will call it as a transfer matrix okay so this transfer matrix relates the multiple inputs to the multiple outputs okay let us take the case of a two input two output system so y of s is equal to g of s d of s that means since it has got two outputs so the y of s is an output vector containing y1 of s and y2 of s 
and similarly since it is a two input system there will be two inputs u1 of s and u2 of s and this g of s is also going to be a matrix of the size 2 cross 2 so i'll just mark the first element in the matrix as g11 g12 g21 and g22 okay so usually the transfer function is something that will relate a particular input to a particular output but here the more than one outputs are related to more than one inputs so if you relate one to one you know relationship if you want to get a one to one relationship that is one input to one output you now what we have to do is uh, take one input at a time okay and make all the other inputs as zero okay for example if you want to relate u1 of s with the outputs set u2 of s as zero okay so that is what we do here y1 y2 this matrix y u1 only i take and u2 i set as zero okay so if i multiply this this is what i will get okay u2 is no, not there so if i write this as single equation separate equations this is y1 of s is equal to g11 yes g11 of s into u1 of s and similarly y2 of s is equal to g21 of s into u1 of s right so this is what we get so now i can relate y1 and u1 and y2 and u1 so this is what i get uh, i think you can see it here So y1 of s by u1 of s is equal to g1 of s and y2 of s by u1 of s is equal to g2 of s. Okay. So in the same way, I can set u1 of s as zero, and I can get y1 of s by u2 of s. So which will be nothing but g2 of s and I can also get y2 of s by u2 of s and I will be getting g22 of s. So if I do the same thing, okay, uh, if I extend, if I have more number of inputs and more number of inputs, I can proceed in this way. So now if you look at this g of s, so g11 of s is nothing but y1 by u1 okay so that is what is the first element and g21 is nothing but y2 by u1 okay and similarly g12 is nothing but y1 by u2 y1 by u2 and g22 is nothing but y2 by u2 so you get a transfer matrix g of s and within this transfer matrix, you have got transfer functions which relate a specific input to a specific output. So this is very important because that is the advantage we have with the state space model. We can handle more number of inputs and more number of outputs at the same time. So this is what is the first observation about this transfer function or transfer matrix from state space model okay and the second thing is uh yeah we will see what we are going to or whether you know this uh, state space model transform to a transfer function model gives any clue about the characteristic equation or something directly okay that's what we are going to see see for any 
matrix A, inverse of A is nothing but adjoint of A divided by the determinant of A. So this is how we define the inverse of any matrix. So the inverse of SI minus A is nothing but the adjoint of SI minus A divided by the determinant of SI minus A. Okay. So that is how we define the inverse of a matrix. So if I replace this term with this inverse term, you know, this is what I will get. I can do a little modification. That is, I just multiply or I just combine these two terms. This determinant of SI minus A will go here and I will get a common denominator determinant of SI minus A. Okay, so in the numerator I have got something. So in the numerator what is there is a matrix C multiplied by another matrix which is nothing but the adjoint of this matrix into B. So this is going to be a matrix and of course there will be S in this matrix, S term in this matrix. So if I multiply this matrix, all ma multiply all these matrices, all the elements within the matrix will have an S term. And similarly, here is also a determinant of SI minus A multiplied by S. This also will be a function of S. So basically, the numerator will, is going to be a function of S. So I'll just represent the entire numerator as a function of S, Q of S. Okay. And if I do so, this is what the G of S, the entire numerator is represented by Q of S and the denominator is determinant of SI minus A. Okay. Now, this is what is a transfer function. G of S is a transfer function. So for any transfer function, how do you get the characteristic polynomial or the characteristic equation? Characteristic polynomial is nothing but the polynomial in the denominator. Here the polynomial in the denominator is this, determinant of SI minus A. So characteristic equation is the characteristic polynomial equated to zero. Okay, so if I equate the denominator to zero, I will get the characteristic polynomial. Okay, or the determinant I can write in this way or this way. Okay, so I got the characteristic, I can get the characteristic equation from, I can get the characteristic equation from what? If only if I know the state matrix. Otherwise, if I know the state matrix, I can get the characteristic equation. This is how I get the characteristic equation. Okay. Uh, obviously, the roots of this characteristic equation are the ones we call as poles of the system. Okay, characteristic equation roots, we will call it as the poles of the system. So, on the other hand, if you take any matrix, okay, A or B or C or any matrix, any square matrix, its eigenvalues can be calculated using this expression. This is how we will calculate the eigenvalue. How do you calculate the eigenvalue? Lambda i minus A equal to 0. This, uh, the determinant value of lambda i minus A we will equate to 0 and we will get a polynomial in lambda and we will solve that equation to get the values of lambda and those values we call as the eigenvalues of the matrix. Okay, so we call that as the eigenvalues of the matrix. Look at this equation and this equation. Are not they the same equations? The only difference is instead of S, I got a lambda or instead of lambda, I got a S here. 
So anyhow, roots of this equation and roots of this equation is going to be the same. Isn't it? So the roots of this equation, I am going to call it as the eigenvalues. And roots of this equation, I am going to call it as the poles of the equations. So what does it imply? The eigenvalues of the state matrix A obtained by the solving this equation is nothing but the poles of the system or the roots of the characteristic equation of the system. Okay. This is a very important observation. So, uh, we can conclude that the eigenvalues of the state matrix A or the poles of the system or the roots of the characteristic equation. Okay. So, what we have done in this lecture? We understood that if I can have a state space model in this form, okay, state space model of any system in this form, I can get the transfer function or transfer matrix of the system in this way. That means I can make use of these matrices to get the transfer function or transfer matrix.